Hello and happy Wednesday. I'm so happy to be back. Um, a little something from my time in New Orleans with the Stampin' Up! backstage event for leaders. Um, our uh, Stampin' Up! Um, event ended on a Saturday evening with a party reception um, put on for the demonstrators. But the highlight of that, there was amazing food, um, dancing, it was just festive and fun. But the highlight of this is at the beginning of the event, and when you walked in, you were handed um, a mask, a boa, and like a parasol, small parasol. And um, so everybody was putting those on and um, there were backdrops. You could have pictures taken with friends, et cetera. But then within a few minutes of the event starting, a um, band of maybe five men, I'm not sure, came in playing music, what you would think of in New Orleans, uh, a marching band. And um, as they went out of the reception room, uh, the staff had us all follow them outside and, um, I mean, this was down escalators and hallways and whatever. We ended up outside in the front of the Marriott. Police were out there, had blocked off the street and um, part of Canal Street. And I don't know what streets we went down. Um, but they blocked off these streets so that we could parade through the town. And you get a feeling what it's like to be celebrated. Um, a, a tiny, oh, we had lots of beads too. Um, a little bit of kind of the Mardi Gras atmosphere. Um, there was a local high school marching band and drill team there playing, and it was so fun. And I was telling my daughter about it today, and I said, the funny thing is people were stopping on the sidewalks or they were coming out of like their hotel balconies and watching this go on. Not only were people on the street stopping and watching, but they were taking pictures, they were taking videos, they were posting it to social media. I mean, gosh, you felt like a, you know, big celebrity or something, but it just was super, super fun. So um, this is my little, I gave the parasol and the boa to um, a demonstrator friend of mine who has a little girl, and I thought that would be a fun dress-up thing for her. But I brought the mask home to put on display somewhere in my Stampin' Peace studio. Um, tonight, we're going to be working with Z-Fold cards featuring the Cottage, let me think, Abigail Rose DSP from the annual catalog. But before I do that, I thought I would very, very quickly show you um, my card swaps that I got um, at the opening reception on, what day was that? Thursday evening. Um, first of all, this is um, a gift that um, one of my demo friends gave to me and um, Beth McCullough. So that was a kind of a fun surprise. So I have that. And then I only swapped 24 cards. So um, I just didn't bog myself down too much. Um, but swapping is always fun. I love it because you get not only get ideas, but it's a great way just to meet people and have fun. So I'm just quickly going to show you these. And then maybe some of these will show up in Facebook Lives um, because I use them a lot of times for inspiration. So sending birthday wishes, the Scotty dog. This was made by my upline Susie who traveled with me. Um, oh, this is a little box that you put together and it holds your multi-purpose glue in there so that the glue is always at the tip. So I have to put that together. Um, here's a card. Sarah Douglas, our CEO, um, demonstrated this um, layout very recently on one of her Facebook Lives. Look how pretty that is. Isn't that gorgeous? We're just doing this quickly. This is that um, 
Hostess DSP in the mini catalog. This is gorgeous, I think. Simple, but just really elegant, stunning. Butterflies, you're an inspiration. They did some watercolor wash. The teacup. Friends like you. I love the stamp set and um, the sentiment that goes with it. How about this one? Does anybody have the Yeti? And if you have it, or even if you don't, the Yeti um, is part of our um, Perfect Pairs Promote, Perfect Partners promotion that begins tomorrow, September 1st. Oh, Tony, you, oh, you're on stage. I thought, were you at backstage and we didn't meet? Okay, you're talking on stage for November. 50 is a great number. You're going to get lots of cool things. Um, Apple Harvest, another Christmas. Isn't this one too just elegant? This is a little um, tea light holder that I have to put together. And then you have um, the train in the front. So that'll be fun. This is, again, from that Hostess DSP, the little piggy, another really simple but elegant card. Look at this one, okay? And this is not one I would have thought to use um, these colors with, especially this bright, um, oh, my friend Candy, um, especially this bright Tahitian Tide, but I love how it turned out. Isn't that fun and festive? Look at this. She even went over the jars or bottles with um, clear, like emboss the whole thing with clear embossing powder so you get that shine. And then I did get this 3D item, which also is fun. And maybe we'll do this for a Facebook Live sometime in September, but it just holds a little candy corn treat inside. Could hold Ghirardelli chocolates, make it for any occasion. So very quickly there, I just wanted to show you my, um, the things I received in the demonstrator shop. Oh, here's one more. This was also made by my upline, Susie. She purchased some of these um, envelope openers on Amazon, and then she used our pillow box die, but she used it flat, just folded one end and sealed it, put a ribbon on this, decorated the envelope, and stuck that in as a little gift for people. So super, super fun. Okay, who's ready to start creating with me? Okay, um... I'm going to start off by telling you I'm using a brand new set that came in, brand new to me, that came in um, my Stampin' Up! package yesterday. And it is the Charming Sentiments. All these wonderful sentiments. You know how much I love sentiments. Um, and there's some really neat ones in here for so that can be used for so many different things. Um, but we also can purchase this as a bundle. I've pulled off some of the dies that I'll be using in the demonstration tonight. There are dies for every single sentiment in the stamp set. All right, if you see it, there's a die to cut it out. In addition to those, they threw in some extras, just a little dotted border, um, pieces to make a birthday candle, hearts, stars. Um, I believe this is like if you did like a shooting star or something like that. I also thought you could put a bunch of these together and they could be like pom-poms. Um, the flower pieces and the stem. This could be for, um, to go around at the birthday candle, like the light shining. So just some fun extra pieces in here. Absolutely love it. Love it, love it, love it. Again, it's in the annual catalog and it can be purchased as a bundle. Um, my thought is, if you're going the stamp set, go the whole way and get the bundle because to be able to have dies that cut out each of these sentiments 
is what a gift. What a gift. That's all I can say. Um, super excited about that. Now, today I'm using the Abigail Rose Designer Series paper. So I just want to show you this quickly. Oops, I showed you that one. Um, there's this. And then the petal pink stripe. That's and that. So in here you have smoky slate, crumb cake, early espresso, black. Um, you get some white and some more of a little cream color in there, but it's it's all neutrals, and you can just mix and match them all. And some of them, like this one, can be colored. Um, some are meant to die cut. I wanted to show you on this one, too. This is kind of unique because in the coordinating bundle, there is one large die. Let me see if I can find it here. One large die. And I'll be showing this as, um, offering this as a, um, what do I want to say? Can't think. Um, a, um, a free project sheet in the next few weeks. I'm going to show you how to make a beautiful card with this. Um, so you can um, do that. Also, when you stamp the flowers from the Cottage Rose set, this one large die will cut out different stamps. So that one, um, these three flowers right here, you can stamp those, that's one stamp, and you can cut them out with a portion of this large die. Um, so that's just kind of a fun, neat thing. A different way to use the dies, and then of course we have individual dies to cut out all of these as well. Plus some extras. Now in this demonstration, I'm not so much focusing on um, the stamp set and the dies because I am using the Charming Sentiments bundle instead. But I just wanted to show you that because it really is um, a beautiful, beautiful bundle. I love everything about this particular suite. So to make a Z-Fold card, a traditional Z-Fold card, you need a piece of cardstock that measures four and a quarter inches by 11 inches, okay? Four and a quarter. I don't know why I just dumped all that here. That doesn't look very neat, does it? Um, four and a quarter inches by 11. And then on the long side, you're going to score at two and three quarters, flip it over, and score at five and a half. We're flipping it over because each of these score lines is going to be folded in a different direction. Using your bone folder, you want to give these score lines a nice crease. So you'll, you'll fold the cardstock in half. And then on that two and three quarter score line, you're gonna fold that flap back. So essentially, this is what you get. Here's how it looks from the top. And then you can fill in with cardstock or designer series paper, a combination of both. You can mix, match, do whatever you like. So for this main section of my vein um, Z fold card, I cut a piece of designer series paper that measures five and a quarter by four inches, okay? And this is standard size. When this is closed, finished in an envelope, it is um, standard size. I have a piece of coordinating designer series paper that measures two and three quarter inches by four inches. And I'm putting that on my front panel, two and three quarter inches by four inches. I have a piece of basic white that also measures two and three quarters by four inches. And I'm using this for that inside middle panel. So this is where I'll write my message, okay, to whoever I'm sending the card to. 
Um, as a little extra, I cut a third piece of designer series paper. Um, Katie, I don't think it's frozen on my end. I seem my phone and my computer are showing that everything's running well on this end. Anybody else having trouble or are things looking okay? But this four inch by half inch piece of designer series paper, I'm just adding to that large segment just as a little extra. You don't necessarily need it. Most often I don't even put one there. I work with two DSPs. Okay, Doris, thank you. All right, so now I want to stamp my sentiment. And I have to think which one I'm using for this. This one. Um, I'm going to stamp my sentiment in early espresso ink. And this one is wishing you everything wonderful. And then I'm going to die cut it. Right here, I want to stop you. Um, and give you a little tip. You have all of these um, dies for the various sentiments. You can kind of look at them and figure out which ones they belong to, but the way to check is just by laying this. And the sentiments, um, the type here on the cover is a little bit smaller than the stamp, but you get the idea of laying it over these. You can see, the, well, that's a match. So now I'm going to cut this out with my mini stamp and cut and emboss machine. All of the dies in the Charming Sentiments bundle will fit in the mini stamp and cut and emboss machine. So if you're like me and you like to have the convenience of this this little guy, this mini, because for me it's just easy to grab and pick up and use. It doesn't weigh very much. And I would say about 90% of our stamp sets, or our uh, dies, can be used with the mini stamp and cut and emboss machine. And look how nicely it cuts that out. Now, let me set this here. I'm going to pop this up. I'm doing a white on white just, just because I want to. You could make this a different color. You might put this on um, brown or um, crumb cake, something like that. But I'm choosing to do white on white. I'm gonna pop this up on the center of that. And this tag was cut from the tailored made, tailor made tag dies. They're basically two shapes and each of them comes in four different sizes. All right, this is one of my fun ones. I actually like to, and I need to um, get Andrea to die cut some of these for me. I actually like to die cut a whole bunch of these from white or colors I use often and just have a stack of them so I can have them at the ready for my various sentiments and um, card making ideas, things like that. I'm gonna put this right in the center. And then I'm going to put it at an angle on my card front. When you're adhering this, you want to be sure that you're only adhering to that left flap. If you adhere otherwise to the whole thing, your card's not going to be able to open, okay? I'm going to do that. And it needs a little something more. So I'm using this natural woven ribbon. I love this. It 
kind of feels like gauze to me. Um, it's super easy to work with. Just a natural cream color. Very thin, so when you make a bow, it does not create a lot of bulk on your cards. Makes for easy mailing. I don't do any extra postage when I make a bow with this um, with this particular ribbon. One of my favorites, and it goes so with so much, and it's super versatile. The other thing you can do with this is custom color it with our Stampin' Blends marker. So perhaps if you wanted a, say, maybe, um, I don't know, add a petal pink bow, you could color it with your Stampin' Blends. If you wanted maybe to add a green, we could have colored this with um, Crumb Cake Stampin' Blends if we wanted it just a little bit darker. And you can do that with, oops, I don't know why I keep cutting or catching that little thread. But you can customize most of our ribbons with Stampin' Blends, which is always lots of fun. And I'm going to finish off this card by adding a glue dot, mini glue dot, to the back of the bow right on the knot and putting it there with wishing you everything wonderful. It stands up, it's fun, um, fun to make, it's elegant, and it's just something different. So when you send it to a family or a family member or friend, um, they just get a fun surprise seeing a different style of card. All right, so that's card number one that I'll be giving away this evening. All right. For card number two, again, I've chosen some designer series papers from the Abigail Rose collection. I've already scored my cardstock. This is petal pink and it measures four and a quarter by 11 inches. I scored it two and three quarters. I flipped it over and scored at five and a half. And now I'm just going to give those score lines a nice crisp crease using my bone folder. Adding this piece of DSP to the large part of the Z fold card. So it measures five and a quarter by four inches. My Stripe Designer Series paper measures two and three, nope, let me think, two and a half, two and a half. Did, if I said two and three quarters on that other card, it's two and a half. Two and a half inches by four inches. And the basic white is also two and a half by four inches. Again, this is where I would write my message. So this is what I have now. And I'm going to stamp with the, should I do crumb cake? You know what, we're actually gonna stamp with, now we're gonna do stamp with crumb cake. I have a one inch by four inch piece of um, basic white cardstock and I'm going to punch the ends with one of my very favorite punches, the Banners Pick-A-Punch. And then I'm going to stamp the sentiment that says, wishing you the happiest of birthdays. Now, like all of the sentiments in this collection, this does have a die. Um, I'm just choosing, it's right here in fact, I'm just choosing not to use it this time. But I could do the same thing that I did on the last card. Die cut the sentiment and pop it up onto a banner. I'm going to, I want this towards the bottom, but centered on my card front. Remember, you only want to adhere to that left flap. 
because you want your card to be able to open. And the reason I didn't use that um, die to cut the sentiment is I wanted to show you that I was using some of those other extra elements from the die collection. We know we have lots of dies that come on two sheets, in fact, um, one for each sentiment, but I wanted to incorporate some of these extras. So I decided to use these three pieces for a birthday candle. So I already die cut these. The nice thing about this is you can, oops, I don't know what happened. Here's my flame that I just dropped. Um, the nice thing about this, you can use up your scraps to die cut any of these tiny little extra pieces, extra die pieces. And I'm just using my multi-purpose glue very, 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 very sparingly. And I'm going to adhere this piece, the petal pink piece, to my basic white piece. Again, that little basic white piece was cut with a die. So everything matches up perfectly. And then I'm going to add this to my card front. Just like that. I think the little candle pieces would be fun to use um, for cards for little ones. You know, somebody's having a first birthday, a fifth birthday, that kind of thing. You can make that many candles. I guess you could do it for any birthday, but I, in particular, don't want to cut out, you know, 60 candles for somebody. Not that they're not worth it, but let's be realistic, right? <laughs> so that's that. I think this one needs a little bling, though. So let me see what I can pull here. I'm not sure that color's working for me. I love, love my iridescent rhinestones. Anybody else have those? That may be the winner today. Oh, wait. Do I want these? These are the champagne rhinestones. Ooh, what do you think? Oh, these would work too. These are the elegant faceted gems. Hmm, okay. I'm going to give you three choices. Choice number one, iridescent rhinestones. Choice number two would be the champagne rhinestones. And the last choice would be the elegant faceted gems. Don't have too many of those left. Champagne it is. Sounds like we should be celebrating, right? Pour the champagne. Let's celebrate. But we can celebrate by making a beautiful card, right? And... I'm just going to use the small size. A couple here. I'm going to add some up here as well. Oh, yes, I like the champagne rhinestones. Good choice, good choice. Okay, that is card number two that I will give away. And we'll do one more. And again, they're all Z Fold cards. Each one starts with cardstock that measures four and a quarter by 11 inches. I've scored at two and three quarters. I flipped and scored at five and a half inches as well. And all of my pieces that I pre-cut are of the same size as the others. Um, somebody asked a question. 
Ruth Zinser. This is called a take your pick tool. Take your pick. And you can find it in um, the annual catalog in the tool section. It costs $10. This end comes off. It has this nice piercing tool. It also has this little um, spatula end. Either one of those can be used to pick up um, little embellishments and things. Then it also has a putty tip. And this is what I probably use most often. Um, you just turn it a teeny tiny bit and the little putty comes out and it's real easy um, to pick up your embellishments. When the putty runs out, you can buy the replacements. And the replacement, the putty refills, I think are $3.75 maybe for two. So, um, and it lasts a good long while. But honestly, if I lost my take your pick tool, I would replace it immediately. I use it that much. It's also good if you die cut um, like little letters and shapes. It's also good for picking up with that. Um, that spatula end I showed you, you could use on picking up little um, things that maybe you um, cut with your Cricut or something like that or of larger embellishments. So super useful, super helpful. One of my favorite, favorite tools ever. Okay, so for this one, I'm using a Smoky Slate card base. And you know, I never would have thought of using um, crumb cake and um, Smoky Slate together, but it works, doesn't it? It works. And you know how I love designers creating with designer series paper. So the small piece of DSP and this basic white both measure two and a half by four inches. Two and a half by four. Oops, I didn't want to put that on yet. See what happens. I'm talking too much. Let me just pull this off. There. I want to add a piece of this ribbon. This, I believe, is part of the um, Abigail Rose Suite. It is called Natural Finish Ribbon. Natural Finish. And it is pretty thin. If you make a bow with this, um, we have a scammer here. Who's that? Don't be afraid to say the name if you think we have a scammer here. Oh, we sure do. Let me just... Okay, that's, thank you very much for bringing that to my attention. That person is now banned from all Facebook Lives, and we're going to delete that. So I think it's deleted. Kathleen, thank you very much. That's never happened to me on a live. It does happen on different posts and things, but never happened on a live. So I appreciate that. You, you're the hero of the day. I appreciate that so much. That is very annoying. Um, ugh, yeah, very annoying. Okay, so I've cut a strip of this ribbon about five inches long, and I'm just wrapping the ends around to the back. Let me put some more adhesive here. Tony, thank you. Yes, if you all, you know, if whoever notices anything like that, um, it's still showing on your end, Kathleen. Okay, I think it... Okay, I tried again to delete it, so hopefully, I don't know if it takes a few minutes or how that works. I thought it was instantaneous. Yes, anytime you notice something that on the live or on one of my sites, usually I'm able to catch them pretty quickly. It happens on the YouTube channel a lot. Um, 
and I usually just report them and then delete. But if you notice that before I do, please let me know. I appreciate that. Very annoying to those of us who <laughs> follow the rules and don't want to be spammy in our businesses and don't want inappropriate things on our sites. All right, so there is, and I forgot to, in all that drama, I forgot to <laughs> burnish my ends here, or my score lines. So this is what I have, okay? One thing different here is the um, adding the ribbon. And for this one, I'm actually going to use two sentiments. And I'm going to stamp them in smoky slates. The first one is says faith over fear. And I'm using a coordinating sentiment that says everything will be okay. I think those two sentiments work well together. Oops, I'm out of the frame. All right. I have these both on the same strip of basic white cardstock. And I'm going to cut them out at the same time. So I've got my dies from the Charming Sentiments bundle. Try to line these up. Here's the second die for the second sentiment. If you feel like you need to whoops, hold those in place with washi tape, please do. I'm like looking for my washi tape. I've Okay, things have been, here it is. Things have been rearranged a little bit. Surprise, right? <laughs> How many of you do that? Rearrange your craft room so many times. If something's not working, you, you move it and leave it there for a bit. I'm, I feel like I'm always doing that. Okay, so I'm going to hold this one in place. When you use washi tape, Keep in mind that you really want your washi tape to be on the outside of um, the die. You don't want to put your washi tape through your stamped image or your stamped sentiment. So you want to use that washi tape to cling to the die on the outside edge of the die. And then we can cut both of those out at the same time. Also, the take your pick tool, it didn't happen that time, but sometimes it did happen with those little candle dies, so teeny tiny, that they actually stuck to my cutting plate after I die cut them. And if that happens, I just use that tip of the piercing tool to pick them up off the cutting plate. Okay, so I'm going to use these in two different ways. The first one I'm going to use as is. I'm not going to mount it on another piece of cardstock or DSP. I'm just going to use it die cut as is. Tony changing rooms in the house. Hey, I get it though, you know. And I'm going to put it right here along the edge of that pretty ribbon. And then the next one, I'm actually going to mount the second sentiment on this piece of crumb cake that I've punched using the Label Me Fancy punch. I'm going to let's 
that going to fit? Pump the sentiment up. And put it right on top of that punched label. And then I want to add it to this portion of my card. Now to do that, I want to close this up first. Rather than just sticking it here randomly, I guess like in the corner is fine, but if I'm trying to center it, like where it's showing, you know, or up there, I want to know what the finished card looks like closed, okay? So for something like this, if I'm adding to that right side, close up the card and hold that left panel down. It just gives you a better vis visual when you're trying to decide where to put that additional piece. All right, there we go, faith over fear. Okay, so what do you think of Z Fold cards? Very, very, very easy, correct? Very easy. Start with a piece of four inch by, or four and a quarter, four and a quarter by 11 inches of cardstock. So you can get two of these out of one eight and a half by 11 piece of cardstock. All right, score it two and three quarters, flip it and score it five and a half, and then you simply Z fold it or accordion fold it. Okay, the fold is, should be on the left as usual, and that um, outer flap will fold back on itself so it opens to the left. Okay, super easy measurements four and a quarter by 11, score it. Uh, two and three quarters, score at five and a half. And then each of the small panels for your DSP or cardstock measures two and a half by four inches. The larger piece measures five and a quarter by four inches. And then from there, you can just create as you wish, mixing and matching colors, patterns, um, DSP, cardstock, finish them off any way you want, um, but it's just a fun card to make and a fun card to give. It's sort of like a fun surprise when people get a fun fold card. I'm going to be giving away all of these cards that we made in this live. If you would like to be entered into the drawing to receive one of these three cards, please comment now, type in the comments, Charming Sentiments, Charming Sentiments. That's the name of the bundle that I use, the stamp set and, and uh, die set, coordinating die set. All right. Yes, Barbara, very easy. Oh, Tony, this is a great time to get your Abigail Rose DSP out. Yes. Okay, Charming Sentiments. Type that in the comments now if you would like your name entered into the drawing to receive one of these three cards. Whew, that was a lot. I had a team meeting, <laughs> um, Facebook Live, I should say, uh, team Facebook Live right before this. So I feel like I've been talking, talking, talking since seven with just a short break in between. Um, are there any questions about the Z Fold card? Okay, a couple of things I want to tell you about um, tonight. Last chance to get in a celebration order, all right? Midnight Mountain Time is the cutoff for celebration orders. Tomorrow, believe it or not, is September 1st, and there is a lot happening in Stampin' Up! in September, First of all, the Perfect Partners promotion starts for customers tomorrow, September 1st, and goes through the end of the month, September 30th. There are six stamp sets in the annual and um, mini catalogs that do not currently have dies with them. 
Stampin' Up! has is offering for one month only dies to go with those stamp sets with the Perfect Partners promotion. All right, so this is an exclusive promotion, limited time on getting dies for the Apple Harvest stamp set, Fresh Cut Flower stamp set, this Birthday Piggy stamp set, Trimming the Tree stamp set, and Waterfall Canyon, Yeti to Party. All right, so for those six stamp sets for the month of September only, you can purchase dies to go with them. If you already own the stamp set, you can purchase just the dies. Of course, you can always purchase just the stamp set. If you want both in September right now, and I'm going to assume it's while supplies last on these dies because they, they're exclusive um, and it's a limited time only promotion. You can get these as a bundle, all right? You can get these as a bundle at the discounted price, all right? So the stamp set and dies, when you use the bundle number to order them, rather than put in two different item numbers, you'll save 10% on both products, so great deal. Um, tomorrow, we will also have new branded merchandise, just like, uh, remember our, let me get one. Remember our um, tumblers that we came out with in the five new celebration colors? We're going to be getting some new branded merchandise in our online store. I do not know what that is. Currently, there's these um, tumblers. There's a sweatshirt, I believe. Um, what else? File folders. I don't know what the new branded merchandise is going to be, but I'm excited to check out the online store tomorrow, September 1st. And that will be ongoing. We'll have those things, you know, as long as they can get some get inventory for them. So I expect those branded items to be around for a long time. Um, the other thing coming in September is the September weekly deals promotion. On four different weeks, September 1st, each starting September 1st, 8th, 15th, and 22nd, Stampin' Up! will release a limited number of weekly deals. I, again, I don't know what these products are, and I won't know until the customers know. All right. Um, Kathleen, I don't think all the tumblers are out. I know the Tahitian Tide, I think it was Tahitian Tide, one of the colors. Um, but yes, they come back. Um, so each week in September, starting on the 1st, for seven days at a time, Stampin' Up! will release a list of, a uh, limited list of weekly deals and those few items will be discounted. You have to check each week, the 1st, the 8th, the 15th, the 22nd. And each of those weekly deals lasts only for that week. Um, and I will do my best to um, put those out in newsletters, on my Facebook page, on my blog, so that week to week, you know what those are. Um, also, with that, please know that these promotions, both the weekly deals, the discounted items, and the Perfect Partners promotion, any of those products can go on a starter kit starting September 1st. So maybe you weren't into the planner, but you're thinking about joining Stampin' Up! for the discount or a little side gig, whatever it may be, um, or just for the sense of community. Um, please talk to me because I would love to have you join with me and we can help you get some of these discounted items onto your starter kit if you choose to do so, okay? All right, everybody. Thanks for spending Wednesday evening with me and I look forward to seeing you again on Friday at 2 p.m. Um, for another fabulous card making demonstration. Until then, have a good evening, have great days, and happy stamping.